Good evening, everyone. It's time to call to order this April 16th, 2019 meeting of the Gallatin City Council. And we have a lot of business this evening, so we're going to get started. We'll begin with, the, as we do each meeting, with the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. Councilman Alexander is going to offer the invocation, and Councilman Fennell is going to lead us in the pledge. If you'd stand with me, please. Let your heart pray. Eternal gracious God, once again, we come with thanksgiving in our hearts. We thank you, dear Lord, for this beautiful day that Thou has created. We pray, O Master, that Thou will be in the midst of this uh, meeting, that everything we say and do will be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name I do pray, and every heart said, Amen. Amen. Place the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Thank you. And now, Ms. Kittrell, if you'd call the roll for us, please. Vice Mayor Camp. Present. Mr. Alexander. Present. Mr. Fan. Present. Mr. Fennell. Here. Mr. Hayes. Present. Ms. Love. Here. And Mr. Overton. Present. Mayor, we have a quorum. Thank you, Ms. Kittrell. The next item before you is the approval of the minutes from the March 16th, 2019 City Council meeting, the April 2nd, 2019 Second. City Council meeting. We have a motion by Councilman Alexander, a second by Councilman Hayes. Are there any additions or corrections? None? All in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. aye. Opposed, please say no. The minutes are approved unanimously. The next item on the agenda is public recognition on agenda-related items, but with this Council's permission, I have two proclamations to present. Would you all be okay with me going ahead and doing those proclamations? All right. With that, I'm going to go to the podium. We have two very worthy organizations that I am delighted to have the honor of recognizing this evening. Um, for the first one, I'd like to invite Debbie Amenta Nunez with her dog Toshi, Rebecca Hunt with her dog Bonnie, and Jennifer Lindell with Alexis. And they are with the, uh, the Music City Pet Partners. And I've passed around some information that they asked to be distributed to the council, and you can learn more about their organization and what it is that they do in our community. Just for your information, these ladies and these furry ladies all volunteer here in Sumner County at organizations like Sumner Regional Medical Center, various retirement homes, the Shalom Zone, and the Galton Public Library. So these are these are furry gals right here in our community and, and, and the ladies that go with them. So, yeah, I'm talking about the four-legged ones, not, <laughs> not the human ones. So I will read this proclamation and then we will do a photo with them. And this says, whereas there are hundreds of therapy animal teams serving in communities across Sumner County, including Gallatin, and whereas Pet Partners is designated April 30th as National Therapy Animal Day, and whereas therapy animal team members of Music City Pet Partners play an essential role in improving human health and well-being through the human-animal bond, and whereas therapy animal teams make thousands of visits per year in settings such as hospitals, nursing homes, schools, and hospice, and whereas therapy animal teams interact with a variety of people in our community, including veterans, seniors, patients, students facing literacy challenges, and those approaching the end of life, and whereas these exceptional therapy animals who partner with their human companions bring comfort and healing to those in need, now therefore I, Paige Brown, Mayor of the City of Gallatin, do hereby proclaim April 30th, 2019 as National Therapy Animal Day and encourage our citizens to celebrate our therapy animals and their human handlers. Furthermore, I publicly salute the service of therapy animals in our community. So congratulations, ladies, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Next, I'd like to ask some representatives from our local recovery and drug prevention or substance abuse prevention organizations to come forward. I'll introduce Will Taylor with the State of Tennessee, Mary Butner, who is a volunteer on the Recovery Court of Sumner County, Tracy Bryant, who is the Director of Recovery Court of Sumner County, Jen Crowder, who is with Volunteer Behavior Health, and Kit Senior, who, Senior, who many of you know because she's the Director of our Sumner County Anti-Drug Coalition. We are so very fortunate here in Sumner County that we have many great organizations working to prevent substance abuse and help those who are victims of substance abuse. And so today we are, rec we are recognizing Drug Endangered Children Awareness Day. And so I'm going to read this proclamation. And this says, whereas April 24, 2019 is declared National Drug Endangered Children Awareness Day, and whereas the month of April is Child Abuse Prevention Month, and whereas drug endangered children are at risk of abuse and neglect due to their parents or caregivers' illegal drug use, possession, manufacturing, cultivation, or distribution, and whereas caretakers' substance misuse interferes with his or her ability to parent and provide a safe and nurturing environment for children, and whereas through multidisciplinary collaboration and community support, we increase the likelihood of intervention occurring in the lives of these children, and whereas with intervention, drug endangered children move from risk to resiliency, and whereas resiliency can break generational cycles of drug and child abuse and can change the traje trajectory of children's lives, and whereas all citizens in Tennessee can play a role in reducing risk and building that resiliency. But now, therefore, I, Paige Brown, Mayor of the City of Gallatin, do hereby proclaim April 24, 2019 as Drug Endangered Children Awareness Day. Thank you all for what you do, and I appreciate you bringing this to our attention so that we may share it with more people. So congratulations and thank you. think about mm, during this opioid ep epidemic that we have we have to remember our smallest population and how they can be affected either by losing a parent to jail or death um, or if they get a hold of the drugs themselves you know it could result in a terrible situation so just another population to think about during this time So thank you all, and we will proceed onward now to public recognition on agenda-related items. This is the time of the meeting where if anyone is here that has a concern about an item that's on the agenda, they may speak. There is a time at the end of the meeting for public recognition on non-agenda-related items. So at that time, you can bring forth any concern that you may have. But right now, we open public recognition on agenda-related items. You'll have five minutes to speak, and we ask that you introduce yourself and share your address. And I would ask that everyone wishing to speak to come on forward so that we're not waiting on people to go back and forth to the audience. So right now, public recognition on agenda-related items is open. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. My name is Todd Alexander. I live at 217 Strange Circle, strange name and no circle. I'm passing around uh, some handouts concerning the proposed development of the Patterson property. It's known as the Winsong Development, the corner of South Water and 109. At face value, when you look at the, the pictures and the proposals that the very nice folks at, I believe it's Reagan Smith, am I getting the company right? All right, uh, we'll present later, I assume. Um, when you look at picture one on the first page, you see a nice flat piece of property. Looks like a great place to develop. 
However, if you look at picture two, you'll see strange circle. I am one of two people that live on that street. And you see the elevation at that point is 517 feet. If you look at the next picture, picture three, you'll see that, that the property, it's not exactly half, but somewhere near the middle, there's a tree line on the Patterson Farm, and that the elevation at that point is 557 feet, 40 feet higher than my street. And then also picture four shows you that out at 109, it's also uh, 557. So I have no problem believing that the front part of that development can be leveled out and made to be a beautiful shopping center, grocery store, some homes, whatever uh, could be. Um, what concerns me, if you go to the next page, picture five shows you a uh, picture of what they are proposing to put some townhomes behind that tree line. And in, I believe anything built behind the tree line or what would be north, if you get your bearing there, uh, going toward the Hellwood subdivision uh, is going to create tremendous drainage problems uh, for us. My property butts up against Dr. Patterson's property. Uh, it's my belief that every single square foot of roof and every single square foot of asphalt that you put down for parking or driveways has got to drain somewhere on that backside. Uh, I'm not a civil engineer, but I recently missed a step on a ladder and broke my leg, and I didn't break it falling up. I fell down. And um, I believe that water has got a 40 foot drop. It's going to drop toward Halewood, and especially my property. If you look at picture six, that is taken right at the end of Strange Circle at my driveway. And you can see that hill, and you can see the tree line up there. And if you look on the, the picture, uh, picture five right above it, you see that, that in their proposal, they have a retention pond right there in the side of that hill. Uh, again, I'm not a civil engineer, but I don't know that the side of the hill is, is a great place for a retention pond. Um, I, I talked with uh, the civil engineer at Reagan Smith. I attended uh, the work session as well as two planning commission meetings and voiced my concerns. I talked with the Reagan Smith civil engineer, very nice young man, and I said, what are you going to do with this water? I'm, I'm the guy 40 feet below what you're building. What are you going to do with this water? And he drew me wonderful pictures of these concrete things and, and water's going to go from this one to this one to this one. And I said, sir, at the end of the day, where is the water going? And he said, down. And I said, it's got to come toward us. And he said, yes, but we're going to try to control that. Well, the problem is we already have uh, concrete ditches in our front yards and our side yards that already overflow with just any good rain uh, that we have. Uh, I voiced my concerns. The city engineer was asked by the planning commission uh, chairman uh, what about it, and he said, you know, Hellwood has always had drainage and flooding problems and, and always will. And that wasn't exactly the answer I was looking for, for some help when you're going to add to the water that potentially comes to my property. One of my real concerns, Madam Mayor and, and, and Board, is this. There was 11 people sitting around here, and I don't know that all of them maybe necessarily had a vote. I came, I presented this very stuff you have in your hands, I, I showed them pictures, I told them my concerns, I even added pictures of our ditches full after an inch of rain. I came back the next month to again voice my concerns, and I asked how many people sitting here on the Planning Commission have actually went and looked at the property. It wasn't just flooding. There's people complaining about how narrow the streets are and all the interconnection that, that they're wanting to do as well, and they said our streets are too narrow for that. I asked how many people have physically went and looked at the streets, at this back side of the property, and would you believe two people had? Thank you, Mr. Fennell, and thank Mr. Wilson the next time you see him. Two people out of 11 actually went to look to even see how wide the streets were, or to even see how steep this hill looks. Now, I know my commissioner's already looked at it. Thank you, sir. I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, but it's, it's, it's unreal to me to put this much property on the side of a hill. And I know they're going to do some cutting. And here's what the, the one, again, great folks, at, they've been very kind, very, they've not been obnoxious in any way. 
but when I asked him, what are you going to do? And, and even Mr. Perrier at the Planning Commission asked him, what are you going to do? And the response was, we're certain we can address this. Well, that doesn't give me much reassurance <laughs> that you really are going to do something to cut this. My last comment, Mayor, is that my time up? I know your time is limited and valuable. Ma'am, I would ask you to listen to the recording of the last Planning Commission meeting. It was absolutely a, uh, a horrific uh, procedure. Uh, Councilman Fennell was making a motion, made a motion, and the chair, without waiting for a second, began to tell everybody why he was opposed to that motion. Mr. Fennell again made a motion, and of course no one seconded it after the chair so so loudly let everybody know he was opposed to it. That, that is not proper procedure. And I think everybody in here, I'm not a lawyer either, <laughs> but I know proper procedure. So thank you. I wish you would listen to it. it. It was several things in there that were really not right. Thank you for my time. If it gives you any comfort, I think there's six members of the Planning Commission. The rest were staff, so. Everybody, nobody else there looked at those two. Yeah. So. Next, please. My name is Catherine Connor. I live on Stephanie Street. Um, I know Todd Alexander is Pastor Todd, so if I refer to Pastor Todd, some of the things he talked about, that's who I'm talking about. When is your street number, just for the 842 record? 842 Stephanie Street. Well, go ahead. Okay, it is my understanding that at the Planning and Zoning Committee that Pastor Todd referenced, um, the connection, um, the connectivity of Duncan, the extension of Duncan Street was discussed. And there was a motion for it, then there was a motion against it, and then there was, it passed with the Duncan Street extension being in the planning, in the zoning. I'm here to talk and to ask you to not extend Duncan Street into what's gonna be considered Winsong. That's, that affects my neighborhood directly. Um, and as Pastor Todd, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Duncan, from where Duncan comes out on Maple. That is a very busy intersection as it is. And sometimes the wait to get out there is incredibly long with the traffic coming both directions. So I made, I made some notes. Between Maple, the next street you come down, if you're driving on Duncan, is Height Street. There are 16 driveways, 16 driveways between them. The next street is Malvin. There's four driveways. The next street, Trina, four driveways. The next street is Rodney, seven driveways. The next street is Stephanie, that's my street, 20 driveways. The next street is Joslyn, 12 driveways. The next street, well, Joslyn extends into what will be Winsong. That's five dra driveways. That's six streets with 68 driveways. Traffic and speed is already a problem on Duncan. And you want to add to it? That's not fair to the residents who live there already. I also understand that Chief Bandy spoke against the extension onto Duncan. If that's wrong, please correct me. Yeah, okay, all right. Um, so anyway, I just want to ask you to reconsider the Duncan Street extension. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Connor. My name is Amanda Ross Gregory, and I live at 229 Leah Court. I'm passing down for you some pictures that are not near as pretty as the pastures. Um, these are my crayon drawings, so please bear with me. Um, as you get these, you'll see that Exhibit A is a picture that Bill McCord brought to you last week regarding the connectivity and the reasons for its needs in the community. The left picture is your driving only transportation pattern, and the right is your walkable connectivity transportation pattern. Exhibit B is your new proposed neighborhood, which mimics the left driving only transportation pattern with nine dead end roads. Uh, it's virtually impossible for someone to walk quickly through this neighborhood into the shopping area or as Mr. McCord mentioned, the school. The next page shows you Exhibit C, which is Elk Acres and Hellwood and my terrible drawing of the new neighborhood. And you can see from the map that Elk Acres and Hellwood Estates are both properly built to the right picture with the walkable connectivity pattern. 
in, exhi in Exhibit C, you can also see the difference that the, the different path that the emergency vehicles would need to take regarding Chief Williams' comments at the last meeting. And the current 109 path would be far shorter than the seven turns a emergency vehicle would need to take to get to my house uh, going through the new neighborhood. So I urge you to think about the connecting of these neighborhoods, along with the traffic concerns, addition to the children in the surrounding schools, the small yard sizes, 10 feet between homes, five in each yard, and flooding issues, you'll be adding a completely different type of community to our already existing communities. Our neighborhoods are the walking connectable transportation network, yet we're being asked to accept less than that from the neighboring community, which you propose to connect our neighborhood. In addition, this new community has no amenities. That would add no value to our existing community, and would Elk Acres become the playground for all of these children, and my dues have to fix what they chair up? Although I'd love to see this plan completely denied, I believe that the growth on that land will happen no matter what. And I ask that you don't push a connectivity of a completely different type of community onto Elk Acres and Hellwood Estates. The potential for the issues has been laid out in fact form, and yet the, the community has been silenced, and the issues seem to appear minute to the City Council. Had, this, had the community had the opportunity to speak with each one of you independently prior to the building people meeting with you individually, maybe our voices would have been heard more loudly. I personally would like Chief Williams to speak on this view, this view of how we would connect and how he would manage to take his emergency vehicles in and out. And I'd personally like to hear Officer Bandy's review um, as he hasn't spoken publicly yet about his views. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Ross Gregory. My name is Holly Cunningham. I live at 537 Cali Avenue in Elk Acres. Uh, my husband and I just bought the house in October. At the time, there was no wind song. Uh, knew it was inevitable. All of Middle Tennessee is growing, so you know it's going to happen. Um, I was fine with the majority of it not okay with the potential for a hotel or mini storage unit um, coming from we came from lebanon and really the only good way to get from lebanon to gallatin is 109. so you want a hotel or storage units to be the first thing you see when you pull into the city i don't um, that's not how i want gallatin viewed that's not where i want my future children to grow up um, as far as the connectivity, I ditto what she said. I have thought about the playground. It's same old, same old. You don't pay for it, you don't really care about it. So are all of these kids gonna come over and destruct what we have and our dues have to pay for it over and over and over? They're not going to add any benefit to our neighborhood except 400 plus cars on our roads. And I went to the planning commission meeting um, where 14 people spoke, 13 against the connectivity, and we were all disregarded except for Mr. Hennel. Um, I thought the way he was treated was extremely disrespectful. Um, and I just don't feel like we were hurt at all. If you think that people are gonna wait at a backed up stoplight to get out to 109, and not cut through a subdivision that has no traffic, you're kidding yourselves. I've done it personally, we all have. Um, so to add 400 potential cars to a one in, one out subdivision, I think is gonna be detrimental to our subdivision and it's gonna bring our safety and our kids' safety down. Thank you. I'm sorry, would you tell me your last name again? Cunningham. Cunningham, thank you, Ms. Cunningham. I don't know if this is allowed, but I was given a statement from another neighbor. Can I read her statement as well as my statement as well? Um, start with your name and address. Please. Okay, my name is Jessica Stanfill. I live at 494 Ryan Avenue. Would you like to start with your comments? I'll and then start we'll with see my comments. Yes, on that's, time. Fine. that's fine. My name is Jessica Stanfill. I'm a resident of 494 Ryan Avenue in Gallatin. I come before you today regarding the Winsong proposal on 109 in Southwater. None of us who have come before you today are naive. This expansive 126 acre farm will be developed at one point or another. 
My concern as a resident of Gallatin and someone who lives near the area the development will be is about the this correctly about going about this correctly and minimizing the impact on the surrounding neighborhoods. As I've spoke every meeting, my number one concern is connectivity. I think that's everyone that keeps coming to you guys' number one concern is connectivity. The road layout of Elk Acres is not conducive to allow the influx of traffic. Sure, you're sitting there thinking, why would people use Elk Acres roadways when they have a traffic light? They will use Elk Acres because less people will be on our main arteries planning to exit. Since the retail will draw much needed traffic, residential will not have a desirable situation. On their, on their hands. Instead, they would rather exit a less clogged artery, Ryan Avenue or Savannah Avenue. After all, this was Mr. McCord's plan all along. Let's keep the traffic off the main artery. However, guess where Ryan Avenue and Savannah go? They go to 109. So whether they exit from Winsong or they exit from Elk Acres, they're gonna get to 109 either way. So why do we need to be connected? This master plan isn't alleviating any traffic from 109 at all. All we're doing in this master plan is causing speeding, extra wear and tear on Elk Acres roadways, and safety concerns for the streets many children feel safe to play in. Mr. McCord argued that the grid connectivity plan is wonderful. His image is the first one that pops up if you go to a Google search and put in neighborhood connectivity. Wonderful research. Unfortunately, that image looks nothing like the connective plan this development has to offer. Sure, the true grid structure that Hellwood Estates, Jacob Heights, and several other neighborhoods in Gallatin offer works. Look at the Winsong proposal. Do you see the lovely grid structure? No, you don't see a grid layout at all. Due to the multitude of wetlands and retention ponds, Winsong cannot uphold that grid layout. With this being the case, can we truly say that maximizing connectivity to provide access to this layout for schools, leisure, and consumer needs is the best way possible. I'm a teacher at Guild Elementary. This layout and connectivity would not encourage me at all to go through Winsong to get to Guild. It would actually take me more time, extra miles, more gas to travel through Winsong over to Hellwood Estates and on to Guild. Why does this possibly make sense? I see nothing enticing me from a financial standpoint or even a common sense standpoint to travel that path. Elk Acres is not exclusive to having the only one entrance and exit. Foxfire, Lenox Place, Fairway Farms are just an example of a few neighborhoods that have that uniqueness and the same characteristics. I just, I really ask that you listen to the residents. Many of us have come meeting after meeting begging you to stop the connectivity. If you want to develop there, fine, but there's no reason to connect it to our neighborhoods. That is my statement. I do have know. a minute 42. <laughs> Let me, sorry, it, she sent it to me on my phone, so I would have to pull it back up. Her name is Cynthia Schaefer. Um, she also lives at Ryan Avenue. I can tell you her address is 495 Ryan Avenue. Um, she would like to voice her concerns over the Winsong project. Her home, which she's extremely proud of, is the greatest asset and now having no way to earn income herself, its retention and value is extremely important to her. If this development proceeds as planned, it is my fear that it will greatly affect the 200 homes of, of Elk Acres. And while I personally did not experience any structural defects from the blasting during the construction of Clear Lake Meadows or Patterson Farms, many of my fellow neighbors did. While I am not opposed to the addition of retail businesses. I believe they are good for, an, for our economy and all of Gallatin residents. residents. I am greatly opposed to the connection of Elk Acres Streets, as I previously lived on a cut through street in Nashville prior to moving to Elk Acres and witnessed firsthand the increase in traffic flow, which leads to my primary concern for the safety and well being of the children who freely enjoy playing on our community sidewalks. It is my fear that the primary and primary concern that if this development as planned and the streets connected, motorists who do not live in Elk Acres will be cutting through our community and will not be cautious or mindful of the children, the community, and it therefore endangering their lives. Also, if this development proceeds as planned, criminals who burglarize homes in Elk Acres will have additional fast escape routes. Lastly, our streets are already difficult to, and narrow to navigate without the increased traffic. Thank you for your time. That was perfect timing. I'm impressed. Thank you, Ms. Stanfield. <coughs> Sorry. My time already up? No. I'm just having clock issues. 
Go right ahead. Uh, my name is Cliff Spears. I live at uh, 1108 Savannah Avenue. Um, I have pretty much everyone else. Thank our show teachers. I unfortunately don't have them today. Of Savannah Avenue, uh, neighborhood has it, and it basically just narrows the street in a couple areas down to one lane. Uh, if traffic were to increase the street, I think it's going to create a problem. Not to mention, like everyone else said, we've got children playing on the streets. I see children all the time when I'm coming home. You have to be mindful of. That's very, you know, my kids are grown. I don't really have to worry about that, but I don't want to see someone else's children get ran over. And I kind of feel like after hearing from the past meetings that, you know, I, I've been married for over 30 years. Uh, I listen to every word my wife says. I don't always hear every word she says. And, and I usually pay dearly for it not hearing what she says sometimes. And I'm just afraid that's what's going to happen if you guys are not listening to us or hearing us. Uh, but I, I, just like everyone said, we know this development is going to go on regardless. Uh, not really fighting that. I just don't think we need to be joined to it. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Spears. Okay, uh, I'm John Miller. I'm at 104 Pond Drive. Um, I'm going to read from the strategic plan, Galvin Strategic Plan Goal Number Three: Preserve history and small town charm. Unplanned growth can exacerbate unwanted growing pains in the form of traffic congestion and decreased affordability. Well, so far Gallatin has already got approved. 3,992 single-family homes, 1,740 apartments, and um, that's enough for 17,831 people with the density that we have per house currently. Uh, we've got other developments that are going to be coming up, and uh, they add another 6,197 uh, 6, people and 1,239 of those will be children. So we're going to have an additional 23,648 people, 4,800 children, and 15 to 20,000 cars a day on the roads. And um, that, that's pretty concerning, all right? And especially in the strategic plan when we say that we lose seven football fields of cropland a year, nine football field, uh, 10 football fields, a tree canopy, and let me remind everyone, science tells us that one mature tree produces the oxygen needs and removes the carbon dioxide of four people. So when you, I don't know how many trees in the football field, but year after year after year, that's a lot of trees. Um, and we gain nine football fields of pavement every year. Now, in addition, you have to add to that all the other communities around. I'm going to read you one statement that this was made by Daryl Woodcock. He wrote it, and he's on the Hendersonville Planning Board. And he wrote this after, his April, after the April 2nd meeting of this year about the Montclair development that wasn't approved. What the commission did not like. The development did not fit with the surrounding area along Jones Lane. This is Hendersonville's last chance to create something unique and available to those of us that would pay a premium to have a larger lot in the country setting. This does not exist anywhere in Hendersonville, so people like me have to move out in the country or to Gallatin. And yet, we're trying to look like Hendersonville. I'm going to pass two pieces of paper around. If you guys could just pass them around, I didn't make copies for everybody because you guys are just you're going to get thrown away anyhow. But the first one is 31E at 510 yesterday afternoon from East Main Street looking towards town. Traffic went all the way back. And if you check with the police, there were no traffic stops. There were no accidents. That's just normal traffic at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And that one was just, is that the idea? of the uh, strategic plan when they talk about <laughs> rural charm. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miller.
My name is Susan Osmansky. I live at 1070 Savannah Avenue in Elk Acres. And I guess I'm just kind of pie in the sky, but uh, I uh, am totally against the wind, wind song development. And I'm actually against the overdevelopment of the city. Um, I don't know if I had enough time to uh, go through all my notes that I had made and hopefully had hoped to uh, talk about, but I'll give it a shot. Uh, at the last uh, planning meeting that we had, um, there was an, a gentleman that, that also lived on Savannah Avenue. He, he, he let, was at 1039 Savannah Avenue. He couldn't make it here today. But he gave uh, examples of the meadows and he, he read, read a statement talking about the meadows development and the Winsog de development and the comparisons, uh, negative comparisons between the two. The meadows was voted down and Winsaw was pushed through. Um, I can't understand why two developments with equal negative comments, one gets passed, one doesn't. I'd like to know why Mr. Perrier's company was not mentioned and why he was allowed to uh, be the chairman for that uh, planning commission involving Elk Acres when he lost the contract for the landscaping uh, of, of Elk Acres. Um, he should, I, I, it's my opinion, he should have recused himself from any involvement with Elk Acres, knowing that he had a conflict of interest. I don't know if anybody would love to make a comment on anything like that. I brought that up at, at the last meeting here, and I was told to uh, see somebody at the end of the session, but I couldn't stay to the end to ask that question. Any comments? This public comment for the public, so it's not a q and I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Well, maybe nobody else knew that, or not too many other people knew that. But um, Mr. Perrier had a, uh, from my opinion, conflict of interest and should have recused himself from any discussion on development that would involve the Elk Acres. Um, at the, uh, also at the April 9th council meeting, one of the council members uh, and I don't know which one it was here, it was a gentleman, made a statement to the effect that even though the residents don't want it, we ha have to consider what is best for Gallatin, don't want the wind song development. We are the res we are Gallatin. We are the residents of Gallatin. We pay the taxes. We voted you in, we can vote you out. It's not w what is the best for Gallatin, it's what's the best for the residents because we are Gallatin. Um, also at the April 9th council meeting, one of the, the developers, or one of the representatives of the developers, mentioned the attractiveness of Gallatin. You councilmen, you council folks, and the planning commission are destroying the attractiveness of Gallatin. It drew many of us to make it our home with this needless overdevelopment and I just can't understand that. Um, one of the, at, at the April 9th council meeting, again, one of the representatives on the development side made a statement that if the city doesn't grow, it dies. He then proceeded to give statistics about Nashville and how home sales are down 6% and closings are projected to be down 22%. One of the, uh, I think it was the chairman of the council here, but I, I don't really, uh, know you folks uh, at this point. Um, asked if Nashville was dying and the developers uh, representative just laughed and said no and then kind of covered his tracks. Um, this is a perfect example of talking out of both sides of one's mouth. But does this prove his allegation that a city has to keep growing or it dies? This overdevelopment here it is just ridiculous. Um, from my point, my perspective and my point of view. Uh, it proves that a vibrant city can still take a breather from needless overdevelopment and see how th everything shakes out before you just destroy it permanently. Um, and I'd like to also bring up the idea when your property taxes are going to and utility costs are going to start doubling or tripling to pay for the required additional infrastructure for all this overdevelopment. 
we will be paying all this increased cost, not the developers. They'll just get rich and walk away to the next place that they just are going to uh, uh, develop needlessly. And uh, I'd like to know also if any of the council folks or your extended families are benefiting from un unnecess all this unnecessary overdevelopment. Anybody have uh, interest in building or building equipment companies or landscaping supplies or maintenance, uh, landscaping maintenance businesses? Again, public comment for the public, I'm well, sorry. Public <coughs> can maybe think about that. They probably, I have only been here a couple of years and my time's up, but I just want to throw that stuff out. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Kelly Lanius. I live at 227 Hill Avenue with my wife, Lisa Lanius, that's out in the audience tonight. And uh, really, I'm coming here tonight to uh, hopefully to get everybody to understand that this is a tremendous, tremendous opportunity for the city of Gallatin. Uh, I think everybody can uh, benefit from a place like Publix and some of the uh, out parcels. But uh, you guys have a unique position to be in a position to be savvy negotiators. And I believe there's some things that really could be put on the table well, to negotiate with. Huh? And one of those would be the development of the hotel, four stories. I don't see that as being uh, congruent with the neighborhood anywhere around. And in conjunction with that, the four story uh, storage facility, don't see that as happening a place. Um, as far as negotiating, you know, we started out uh, with the Planning Commission, there was going to be apartments. Uh, I appreciate Councilman Fennell saying that he would uh, encourage folks not to be for that. And so thankfully, that got taken off the table. However, it seems like when that was taken off the table, the number of townhomes doubled. And so I think uh, a savvy negotiating position and to increase land space in between the townhomes and the cottages would be a great, a great idea, maybe cut it in half. Uh, I'm concerned with um, the water runoff because I live right beside the pasture and I've seen uh, the damage firsthand that the water can do to a person's basement, the streets, my, my driveway gets flooded uh, each and every time we have any significant rainfall. And we do live directly at the, the bottom of that uh, back half of the property where the townhomes are going to be built. Um, I also convey the thoughts of my friends here I consider and, and community members tonight when they're talking about the impact of the uh, roads being extended from Hell Estates and from Elk Avenue or Elk Development. And I appreciate Mr. Fennell once again for standing up. The only one that really did and uh, without, with the exception of probably uh, the officer here also, and we're concerned about the traffic, the noise, uh, crime, uh, just the constant influx that's going to cause between Maple into Publix and going out. Uh, other things that I'm concerned about uh, here tonight is as far as, you know, once again, that, that density. If that could be cut down drastically, that would be great. Uh, on street parking was mentioned last time. Uh, I don't know where that would be a good idea. I see that as a safety factor for uh, kids walking in neighborhoods that are supposedly going to be walkable. So I think that should be taken off. I'm concerned about the traffic, the traffic from 109 that I see every day going to Portland and the traffic going to Gallatin. Uh, also concerned about um, the, uh, the need probably for a berm to be considered to separate uh, maybe elk and definitely hell estates from all the development that's, that's evidently going to happen. Uh, and maybe in, increase the size of the landscaping they're just talking about putting in there. Um, the traffic light on South Waters, it's going to be maybe, I don't know, less than a thousand feet from the light at Airport Road in 109. I see that as being a backup, so what we want to do as a bypass. I think that's going to be a tremendous issue. It's something to consider. Uh, I don't know if, if one 
or the other traffic light could be maybe done away with. Uh, but I think keeping those roadways from the existing developments, as you've heard tonight, would probably, if we could do one thing, that would probably be far and above the one thing that we could do and be good negotiators and let the people that are going to develop development, let them know that we're, we're as a city and we stand strong and we want to see this city be nice and be something we can all be proud of. And um, lastly, but not leastly, uh, many other cities around us, especially Williamson County, has tremendous impact fees. Where when developers come in, they've got to pay a price, a price above and beyond the regular taxes to help for schools, for infrastructure, utilities. And so that's something that I'd like to see our city definitely put on the agenda and get into a law situation where we don't constantly have to be taxed to death when these developments continue to come. So thank you for listening to me. I appreciate you being good negotiators and help our city be beautiful and grow and, and be vibrant. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lanius. <coughs> Hi, my name is Jenda Clemens and I live at 239 Leah Court. Um, Amanda Ross Gregory is my neighbor. Um, the main I issues that I want to bring up, all of my neighbors and people who live in the surrounding areas have basically said everything that's on my mind. Um, but I really wanted to re reiterate my concern uh, with the sinkholes around the area and the possible property damage. Um, my backyard meets the property and I've enjoyed the two years that we've lived there, um, the huge families of deer that go through. I'm very sad that we won't have those great views, but you know, we figured it was inevitable that farm was going to end up being developed at some point. Um, the problem is my home, it touches, my property touches what has been called a retention pond, but we have since found out that it was actually an active sinkhole that was supposedly developed to prevent it from sinking any further, um, which is terrifying because I'm sure that's something I'm going to have to tell people when I try and sell my home. I mean, I was misled about that when we purchased the property. Um, and our neighbor two houses down from us has had two sinkholes, active sinkholes open up in the back of their property, um, which, you know, typical rain. We live in a very uh, sinkhole prone area, especially in Tennessee. That's fine. Um, I've also had neighbors who had damage done to their property um, with the other developments, and I cannot remember their names, um, when blasting was happening uh, close to our neighborhood. So I'm deeply concerned with if something like blasting were to happen, what would happen not just to the general structure of my home, because um, as my neighbors have mentioned, people had cracks in their foundations. I think some ceiling issues happened. Um, but I'm concerned about what kind of sinkhole issues that could open up around my property. Um, I have a two-year-old daughter, and the thought of damage to my property that could actually hurt us within our home um, is something that I lay awake at night fearing. And so knowing that this possible development could influence that and put my family and my life in danger is very, very scary. Um, the second part of this that I'm concerned about is um, I'm a former educator, current stay-at-home mom, plan to work with Sumner County Schools in the future whenever my daughter goes to school. Um, and even if each home that was being built in this development only had one child, that is an incredibly large number of students, not counting all the other development in the area, that are being brought into the schools. And I've seen firsthand how increasing student to teacher ratios um, work against positive, good, equitable education for all students and make a teacher's life infinitely more difficult. So I don't know, I'm sure the school system will do all that it, it can to accommodate these students, but I feel like there needs to be a lot of input from the educators in the area, and they need to be worked with when we're having all of these developments within the city of Gallatin. Because ultimately, for the sake of making a buck, we're possibly putting the education of our kids at risk, and that just would be so super disappointing because I've heard great things about Sumner County Schools. I want to work for Sumner County Schools. I really don't want to see them kind of go down the drain. Um, I believe that might be the main things I'm going to say. Yep, that was basically it. Um, I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Clemens. Good evening, Madam Mayor, Council person, I think you need to say. Uh, Pascal Jovance, Longoro Park. Um, I was not going to talk about wind sound because I haven't followed that. I was going to talk about 
agenda number one, but um, when I'm listening to all oh, the your people. Addre your address, I should know it by now, something long calling. The what? Your address, I'm sorry. 1335 Longolo Park. Um, when I all, the people come on, come here, I just remember um, something you said when we were talking about the light issue, where you say that, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Madam Mayor, but I think you say when one person complain, that basically the voice of 100 person would don't say anything. Uh, I think you said something kind of like that. So if I look at the last planning commission was 14 people talking, tonight there was 10 people, it's 24. If I base on the last census uh, of the population of Gallatin, I represent probably around 5% of the population of Gallatin. So I think maybe you guys should uh, listen to what they say and, and try to um, be more attentive of the concern. Now back to the green space, Madam Mayor. We want to spend a lot of money to buy green space. I'm kind of a practical person, so I try to figure out where we spend the money and all that stuff. So what I don't understand is that you guys authorize all this development um, with a minimum open space. I'm getting old, I need stuff to sleep, so I found the, the, um, the city ordinance really interesting. Um, so I, I tried to read it. I didn't find in a city ordinance nowhere talking about green space. We talk about open space. Um, so I think why, why you guys change the ordinance and make a point like wonderful lady was saying to, to try to make something different here and for the developers to include a real green space in their development where kids can come and play, stay there. Um, instead of just talking about open space, we include retention pond. Yeah, that's, that's really helpful for the kid to go play retention pond. Um, and development where basically every neighbor is going to be able to open his window and shake the hand of his next neighbor. I don't know, we could call that the Galatin Green New Deal. That's catchy, catchy name. Uh, I think people made a lot of, paid a lot of money to find that name, so that would be kind of nice. But that's just something to think about. Um, like that would we'll not have as a city taxpayer money to spend million dollars to go buy some green space that would be already there. Just an idea. Thank Madame you, Mayor. Mr. Chavance. Anyone else wishing to speak this evening under public recognition on, non, on, on agenda related items? With a reminder, there will be a not time at the end of the meeting where you can speak on non agenda items. Okay, seeing no one, I'll declare public recognition on agenda related items closed. Moving us now to Mayor's comments. And I do have several things this evening. The first of which, and Rachel, I don't know if you need to address this as well, but the first of which is a report on our debt obligation. We signed the bond yesterday on the gas, or signed the papers yesterday on the gas bond. It is required that we report to this council what the debt service on that is. Um, we don't have to vote on it. We don't have to discuss it. You just have to be made aware of it. Anything different I should say, Rachel? Ms. Nichols says I've covered it adequately. Any questions? All right, you have that. You may take it home and read it. Or pass it on to Mr. Javants, and that can help him sleep at night. It's actually short. Um, <laughs> the next item is um, just the release that was sent out yesterday, and I hope the public's interested in this as well. This was a release from the Galton Economic Development Agency, and it was about Archer, Archer Data Centers moving to the city of Galton. This is a project that's been in the work for quite some time, and we're very excited about this because this represents exactly the kind of investment we have been um, attempting to attract to Galton. It's a high capital investment, low jobs, but very high wage jobs, and we hope that that is going to continue to be the trend. This is. Um, um, Archer Data Centers will go into the industrial park. It's going to be across from Moretta next to Axum. 
And in addition to their initial investment, we expect future tenants could invest up to $100 million. So we're very thankful. We appreciate our partners in that. Certainly um, TVA, the state of Tennessee, and anyone else I should mention, James? Mr. Yes, our, our electric partners. Oh, yes, certainly Galton Public Utilities and Galton Electric Department, always um, great partners in that, and so we appreciate that. Did you want to say something, Mr. Fennell? No, oh, okay, very good. Glad to know that. On the ball with something. And I wanted to remind the council, too, that I think this Friday, um, Chief Williams, it, it's Friday, and that's the last day to order bricks for the bell, what, what I'm calling the Bell Garden. I don't know if it has a proper name, but um, next Friday. Next Friday. It's your last day to order bricks, and so Chief Williams will take your checks. Um, this, uh, just a couple of calendar reminders. This Friday is Good Friday. Most city offices will be closed. Traffic pickup, uh, traffic, not traffic, garbage pickup will not occur on that day. Um, there is another car cruise in in the City Hall parking lot this Saturday. And next Friday, the Good Morning Gallop and formerly the Government Relations <coughs> meeting will happen again at Sumner Regional <coughs> Medical Center. There's only two more this year, so again, I'd encourage people to attend that if they would like. It's at 7.30. And let me make sure. One of them's not happening at Sumner Regional, but this one is at Sumner Regional. And so I think that that's going to, con um, there's my five minutes, um, concludes my mayor's comments. And we will move now into the regular agenda. So the first item on the regular agenda. Do you want to move item number four up to the top? Okay. Um, Councilman Alexander has an issue in that he may need to leave early, and that's item number six. It should be um, a very short item, so with no objection, we will move item six up to item number one. And then Councilman Hayes has requested that we move up item number four to item number is two okay with you, Councilman Hayes? No, that's, I just thought we should. I mean, that's what everybody's here for. Okay. Play, is that okay with everyone? Sit around all, all right. Night. So yeah. let's proceed now with item number six and recognize Councilman Alexander for first reading on Ordinance 01904-24. Thank you, Mayor. This is an appropriate expense and revenue money for the Ab Galton Haddon Track uh, grant, and I so move. Second. We have a motion by Councilman Alexander, a second by Councilman Fennell. Is there any discussion of this? Okay, this is first reading on Ordinance 01904-24. Would all in favor please say aye. Aye. Opposed, please say no. It does pass unanimously. And we will move now to item number four, which is first reading on Ordinance 01904-22. And for that, Vice Mayor Camp is recognized. Thank you, Mayor. This is Ordinance of the City of Gallatin, Summer County, Tennessee, <coughs> rezoning 126.36. Three six plus or minus acres, consisting of 17.16 plus or minus acres, from the residential R15 medium density to the PGC plan commercial. 14.02 plus or minus acres from the R20 low density residential district to the PGC plan general commercial district. 76.45 plus or minus acres from the R15 medium density residential district to the MRO multiple residential and office district and 18.73 plus or minus acres from the R20 low density residential district to the MRO multiple residential and office district with a preliminary master development plan for Windsong located on the north side of Highway 109 and the west of South Water Avenue authorizing, authorizing the revisions to be indicated on official zoning atlas refilling conflicting ordinances provided for servability and provided for an effective date. So moved. Second. Motion by Vice Mayor Camp, second by Councilman Hayes, opening the floor for discussion. Who would like to be Councilwoman Love? I'd like to ask the, the if there's a representative. Well, I'd like to ask him if you can reassure the residents that are concerned about the uh, drainage problem at sinkholes on what you all are going to do to take care of that problem. Sure, sure. And that's uh, Randy Caldwell with Reagan Smith here representing the applicant. And I've been doing this for 35 years, and the questions are always traffic and drainage, you know, at the, at the end of the day. So we have a long history of being able to address that. And usually drainage is my simplest answer because we know that the city, you know, will, will, you know, require detention. We're not allowed to put any more water on them than what is allowed to go on now. But 
we, this was identified as a problem early on in the process with the staff when we first met with them. So uh, they made us aware of some efforts that they want us to go through to be even more diligent about the drainage on this property. Uh, and we're committed to that. Uh, one of the efforts that we will have to do is more of a regional drainage approach to this to help identify some of the issues that they are, you know, seeing within their own development that is beyond our development. So we are committed to that. Uh, we did discuss about oversizing our detention ponds uh, over and above what is required by the city. So where the city requires you to account for the 10-year storm, we are designing our structures to, to for the 100-year storm. And we have done enough preliminary engineering on this because obviously there is some earthwork that's going to you know occur on this property. My client has to have a good feel for that, that he can make this work from you know, from an earthwork standpoint, make sure that we can accommodate those, and, and we, we can, we believe we can. We've done enough looking at this to do that. Uh, on top of that, the other thing that we talked about with, with staff uh, as, as part of this process, again, there's some drainage issues that are occurring downstream from us that are not a result of us, but a result of some things that have happened in the past. And I did, do believe we stated this at the Planning Commission, but my client is willing to contribute up to $100,000 towards off-site drainage improvements as part of, uh, as part of his program, uh, if the city would match that uh, with some of their stormwater fees. So we're, we're willing to go to that level as well. So, uh, you know, the assurance I can give you is, you know, we're, we're engineers. You know, the last thing we want to do is be sued, you know, for something that's going on downstream for causing a problem like that. So we take that very seriously when we're looking at a plan and, and we've looked at it very seriously in this due diligence phase of a project. So it's not something that we have ignored. We've tried to address this uh, head on as part of our process. Does that answer your question? It does. And as far as the drainage, what about the sinkholes? Uh, yes, sinkholes, again, uh, you know, we have geotech done, you know, as, as part of what we do. So, uh, you know, the best case is to, to avoid those. You can do injection permits. Uh, sinkholes are common throughout Middle Tennessee just something we have to deal with. There's uh, mediation that can occur if you run into those. Uh, if we can leave them, you know, we'll leave them uh, in place. But uh, that's just part of the topography, you know, to part of the geologic formation down here. So it's something we're accustomed to, to dealing with as, as well. So no geotech, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mom. So, so no geotechnical work has been done. We have had some geotechnical some, work. Some, but not we've, we've, Yeah, we've had that. You know, they'll do further geotechnical work as we get into construction okay. plans. That's the normal procedure. We get some preliminary geotech work done out there. There's been a couple sinkholes identified, but again, our goal is to usually stay away from those if, if we can. If uh, you can still develop on them with some mediation, but uh, I think the sinkholes that they're referring to, uh, which is up against uh, Elk Acres, if you look at the master plan, that is, you know, and a lot of open space that is down there, so we can we can work around those. Um, you know, if we put water in there, we have to get a permit from the state to do that, so they monitor that as well as part of our and process. And if they alter the plan in any way, Mr. McCord, they'd come back to planning. The the plans that are before you are preliminary master development plans, so the engineering plans will be a lot more detailed it may not be necessary to come back with a preliminary master development plan unless the planning commission considers it a significant Thank change you. any other questions for the representative while he's here Bruce Love were you finished I'm sorry I was going to ask if you have any uh, any plan to have a playground put in in there. I didn't see it on. Yep. Oh, uh, not at this time. I mean, the amenity for this development is the streams, the wetlands. We have a pretty talking about walkability of the community that was brought up. We have some uh, trails that we have integrated uh, throughout the development and some I sidewalks. But I can certainly, I don't have an answer for you that today. That's something we can go back and I can ask the developer of the, of the residential component if they consider putting a playground. We certainly have area that we can do that on there if that, if that is the will. I think that might help some of the concerns of um, the Elk Acres people sure, sure. with um, uh, those I'll, concerns uh, about kids coming over and damaging theirs. Sure. I'm still we'll a little, <laughs> I'm still not thrilled with that 10 foot difference between the homes. Oh, I understand, I understand. And uh, I did, you know, go back and look at your zoning ordinance. And these are 6,000 square foot lots is, is what the single family lots are. 
and the zoning classification is an RM6 or R6, one of, one of those two, which does allow for five foot setback. So that's where we got that setback from, to being consistent with what's in your zoning ordinance relative to that size lot there. So we, again, we felt we were being consistent with, with that, so. I, I understand that this is sure. a great piece of property to be developed, and I think most people realize that it's going to be, and uh, a grocery store over there would be really nice to have. And, You've done a lot of work to, to help by taking out the apartments and looking into a playground, et cetera. Um, so my other thing, my other problem is that connectivi connectivity, which, you know, is not something that you need to deal with, but. It's not, and, okay. you know, again, I'm I've been doing this for a long time. That's a city minute, issue. To thank you. Debate thank sure, you're, well, you're welcome, question. you're welcome. Councilman Finnell, did you have something for the representative? Not the representative. I think it would be more towards you or uh, our city attorney. Anyone else have anything for the representative while he's standing there? I do. Councilman Pan? Looking into and committing to a playground are different. Okay. You think they would commit to a playground? Prior to second Prior. reading? Yep, we're good. We can. <laughs> Easy answer. All right, now? For you, but okay. just suppose I, I and this, uh, these people, Reagan Smith and the engineers and stuff, I'm really concerned. On county level, when I was a county commissioner, we built a school one time, and once school was built, it flooded a row of houses. We was able to hold their feet to the fire because naturally we had to pay them. And they went back and corrected the problem. If just any chance they was to develop this, and I think that you'll help the water situation, I honestly do. But just say if the water situation got worse when he built this and it was coming off his property, do we, the city, have any kind of recourse <clears throat> towards this developer to make him go back and fix it? Well, we'll hold it. Yeah. Yes, they, I mean, we would definitely have recourse if, if they didn't follow the, the plans correctly. Absolutely. Uh, Councilman Pam? Are you asking all the plans of having the solution are different? Yeah. You know, if the plans are, the plans don't That's provide That's something you'll have to do on the front end. Okay. And that's where we lean on our engineers with their engineers. Pardon? I said that's where we lean on our engineers to work with their engineers. Because I certainly couldn't tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Councilman Everton. Mayor, I've got several emails and <coughs> phone calls this last week about the infrastructure and, and the fees and, and the impact of schools and everything. If I could ask Tim to come up for just a minute. Hmm? Tim's with our oh. code department. Tim, if you could answer us for just a minute, and I know you can't give a definite, you know, on the amount of, of fees, but can you just enlighten us on uh, uh, what kind of fees would be involved over here and about the amount of fees that would be involved in development like this that would help offset the impact to the city? What, what we look at is we took the 465 units uh, that they were talking about, half single family, half uh, townhouses, and from a standard fee that we've seen through the last couple of years, you're talking anywhere from 2000 to $2,500 a home will be charged for building electrical, uh, those types of permits. You're looking at a million, million and a quarter uh, income to our department uh, just on permit fees. Mr. Wakeley, That doesn't have anything to do with the yeah. commercial, commercial B. You, you may not know this. I was just wondering if you happen to know the number on that, how the adequate facilities tax was calculated. That I don't. I don't I'd have to guess at that. I think it's like 72 cents Are per you, square foot. That's my I, understanding. I think it's like 72 cents per square foot that the county gets it, and all that money has to go to the school Schools. system. Well, I so met like, with that. That was my point. I was just going to ask. I was just going to ask that question, not only to the city, but the county gets that kind of impact fee that. You know, they have the bill school. Not called an things. impact fee because that was only approved that's, for Williamson that's, County. That's correct. So. That's correct. But it's the but thing. there is a lot it's the same thing. There's a lot of money that these developers have to pay to for for, for a development like this that goes to to pay for schools, to pay for roads, to pay for all this stuff. And it's not 
They just don't come in here and build one. I mean, there's a lot of fees, and, and, and I mean, we're talking several million dollars worth of fees that, that, that they'll have to pay to us in the county to be able to build a subdivision. So for, for folks to send us an email that says, we don't have an impact fee, there's nothing that impacts that, that, you know, but there is, there's a lot. So all I would ask is please just everybody do your homework um, and, and understand the overall picture of this and, and the impacts that, that they have to pay to, to do business in the city of Galveston. Jimmy, I'd like to point out that yesterday I met with uh, Anthony Holt and I've, that was a question that I brought up. It's 40 cents per square foot industrial, 70 cents per square foot residential, and that money does go directly to the building fund for Sumner County Schools. And point out that I think it's Franklin just changed their rate to straight $10,000 that goes to the school per permit. Mr. Caldwell, I have a question. Uh, and you may not even know this. I, I'm asking all kinds of questions, although I appreciate Mr. Pennell and Mr. Overton with the answer on that one. Um, do you have a timeline that you project the build out on this to be? Uh, I believe we projected five years out, if I'm not mistaken. I think the residential would be maybe more like six, probably three phases with the residential, which would take the longest. There, those are usually two years, you know, per phase on that. You know, they uh, again just to reiterate what we said at the last meeting. The um, the grocery center would be coming out first phase as as part of this development. The wild cards usually out parcels. Sometimes those go real quick. Sometimes they don't. You, know, you, just, just, you, you just you never know with that. But I think so you, you would project grocery within two years. Yes, I think that would be pretty accurate. I mm -hmm. think yes, that's probably yes, a question that many people would have. Mm -hmm. And that would be again first phase. That would be part of the first phase of development. Okay. Council. Mm -hmm. oh, well, Councilman speaking Mark. of the grocery store, do you have a commitment from a certain store? Because we've heard rumors, but yeah. uh, we, we're not at liberty to say who that is quite yet. Quite yet. Questions? Anyone? No further discussion. We're ready for a. I have a question, but it's not really doesn't okay. apply to you. And I would say it has to do with the connectivity of the roads, because that's uh, we heard from um, several people that say how wonderful it is and how we really need it to be that way because of emergency vehicles. Can we consider connecting those? Duncan Street, for example, and putting up an emergency gate that would stay closed until it was needed for an emergency chief or whoever. I'd say that'd be something for engineering crash and crash planning the and the fire department to address. Fire department from the safety aspect, but then I'd like to hear from engineering and um, planning on the other issue the fire department wouldn't have an issue with that um, and Coles has just said they probably would be okay with it as well but we would probably have to do some research and determine what type of barricades and um, that could go there to reduce the traffic but only be used for emergency access okay, thank you because just from my own experience on Duncan driving through there I know that people are going to cut through and just speed through there to get to to South uh, to 109. I'm I feel really afraid. So, is that something that has to be voted on, you know, included in this motion tonight, or there is, is a there? second reading? Um, public hearing, second reading. Public there's public hearing would be in two weeks, and then okay. in two weeks after that would be second reading. So I'd like. I'd like to hear more about that, and I'd also like to amend it to include the playground. But is that something we do tonight or next? Um, they still have a master development plan to be approved, Mr. McCord. Is it something that planning, based on this discussion, would hold them to in the master development phase? No. I would uh, make that amendment to the preliminary master development plan. And we can work out where appropriate location would be, so they could just okay. You could just say add a, a playground for I don't know how large of a playground you have in mind, or what type of children you want it to accommodate. 
but you probably at this stage don't want to mandate it to go in a certain location on the plan right now just provide we some got flexibility you. and get it at fmdp stage yes miss love an amendment would be proper tonight whenever doesn't matter Now you amend it first. Then I move that we accept this plan with, as, uh, with the addition of a, of a playground to be added. Second. Okay, so the amendment is for the addition of a playground with a second by Vice Mayor Camp. Is there any discussion on the amendment? Will they show us a rendering of that? I know it's the second reading right there. I don't know. Would you, Mr. Caldwell? We, 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 Prior we, to we second reading. Up, we can come up with some images for that. Yes, sir. Well, the big one might have to take a couple <laughs> Any, anyone else have discussion on the amendment okay all those in favor of the amendment please say aye. aye opposed please say no any abstentions amendment does pass unanimously so we're back on the motion as amended now is there any further discussion on the original motion now as amended seeing none we're going to vote on first reading on ordinance number 01904 22 all in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, please say no. Does pass unanimously. We now move to item number one, which is second reading on ordinance 01903-19. And Councilman Everton is recognized. Thank you, Mayor. This order authorizes the mayor to negotiate to purchase three different properties. Not so moved. Motion by Councilman Overton, second by Councilman Fennell, opening the floor for discussion. Yeah, this, this is one that I, I talked about, and I'd like to see us, if we could, vote on each one of these individually. Is that a motion? There's a motion. All right. Yeah. I'll second it. Motion by Councilman Hayes to vote on the three properties individually, and then I think that would set forth an amendment to the ordinance, and then we, we would amend the ordinance before we move forward. So I have a motion by Councilman Hayes, a second by Councilman Fennell to vote on these individually. All in favor, please say aye. Opposed, please say no. So let's proceed with discussion of the um, properties. Is there one that you'd like to speak about first? Let's do Langley Hall first. And we'll talk about Langley Hall first. Langley Hall, yeah. I got a question on that. Uh huh. Have we seen the appraisals on each of these properties? Yes, and, okay. and, and they were all sent to you. Well, yeah. was, they were all included in your packets at some point. We've not reprinted them all do because they're extensive. Yeah. Okay, did we not rezone that property? We did rezone that property. And the appraisal was done after we rezoned it? It was. Okay, would that not make it more expensive than if, if we would have left it well, like I'm it sure was? Well, I'm sure it okay. did, yeah. I'm okay. sure it did. All right. Because I think it was agriculturally, well, yeah. no, there were, uh, I don't recall what the zoning on it was. Mr. McCord, do you? Yeah. I mean, he, that, it's okay, you don't have to. As I, I mean, part of it was industrial, yeah, part of it was residential. That's right, that's right. So, you know, the industrial, in theory, we, could have been more extensive, and the residential. We, have we come up with a plan and cost about what we're going to do with the building or anything like that? No, we have not. That would be a, a long term issue well, to so, address. So, if we go and we spend this money on this property now, we're just going to let that building just sit and just. Well, I'm take I, care of it. And I would be hopeful we're going to cut the gra that we grass would, uh, and do all that stuff. Yeah, and, 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 the, and the maintenance, as projected by Mr. Brown, was not nearly as. Um, they went to hire somebody else, and no, he said we didn't. And and his maintenance. Remember his maintenance um, estimates that came to y'all. They were not significantly substantial. The building could be a significant cost, but I think that building is also a very significant opportunity, as I described to you all. I would love to see us have the opportunity to create a training center similar to um, the Andrews Leadership Institute at Camp Widgewagen, where we had a training facility in that building, which is could be all one large room with great audiovisual, a small kitchenette and restrooms that would be available to our civic groups, certainly to our city departments for their uh, um, training and efforts and issues, and also to our corporations because that is one thing in this community that we seriously lack is a good facility in which um, the public can have meetings and trainings and so uh, that that is my dream for that property because and, and also there might be some, some opportunity down the road to possibly some grant money that, and, well, and i would so. think that we could find some grants for which we would be eligible for that kind of pursuit 
Beyond that, you know, I'm very passionate about this property because the historical significance of Langley Hall, and there are some structures on the property that have been looked at by, well, I can't tell you the fellow's name, but he's kind of an expert in these old things, and he says that the foundations of these old structures that to David Brown now look like they're about to fall down, he said that the integrity of the structures is actually good and that the foundations are original foundations and they had the horse here in the foundations and that they could have very significant, uh, uh, they could have great significance historically. And I, again, this is my dream, but I'm open to whatever anyone else might dream or have a brilliant idea for. But I could see um, that whole park being a great educational venue where you could have interpretational exhibits where mm -hmm. children could learn about agriculture or the history of Langley Hall or, or the history of Gallatin, whatever it may be. But I just, and well, it has that, that, old brick, uh, that old rock wall and... Clarify okay. one thing for me, Pat. Okay. I know there's a lot of ideas out there what could become of sure. this. Let's just suppose that years down the road things change and we want out, mm -hmm. and I think there is an avenue. Can you explain to me what we're, we would be allowed to do with this property in the future if we chose to do something with it? Like well, until we decide to purchase this property, the owner is not going to spend the money to have a conservation easement created. At the time that a conservation easement is created, we would certainly be a party to that. I mean, that's part of our negotiation. But I do not think that the landowner would sell it to us for the dollar figure she's willing to sell it to if we um, were not agreeable to not develop, developing it industrially or um, with a high density residential use. I do think she would be open to selling it to us if in that, in that easement we allowed for a few homes or, um, Oh, Susan, you were in the meeting. You, you may have some other memories. I mean, she was, the owner was fairly open to whatever we wanted, but we could have some homes, um, recreational facilities, interpretive centers, all, all kinds of varying things. We would be the author of, of that on the front end. We'd be very involved in so that. So we'd always have a way out. We would have a way out, but you know, certainly I'm open to direction from this council. We could probably um, ask her to agree to something where, you know, if we could sell it in three acre parcels for individual homes. That's just out of the blue sky. She may say, oh no, only five acres. I, I, I don't know what, what she might be open to, but she seems fairly open because she does understand that position for us as well. You know? I just think we're just getting into something that we just do not have any idea what the cost is going to be down the road. I mean, and I just, I just think it's a mistake for us. Well, That's the last thing I'm going to say about that. I appreciate it, but I feel strongly yeah. that the cost for uh, preserving land right. that is below market value that will only continue to escalate in value is, is well worth it. Mr. Fan I, uh, Mr. I think uh, Councilman Alexander was ahead of you. I, I just have two questions. Okay. Uh, question number one. Do we have any idea uh, approximately about how much the land in that area was selling for or sold for? Um, it's in the appraisal. There's some comp comps that were included in that land, and it appraised for $1.8 million, so that would probably base comps in that area at about 35000 an acre. Um, I can go through the appraisal. I was right just now. wondering. I, I, I was. I was under the impression that some of that land in that area sold for like 15000 uh, per acre. I'm sure it has at some point, okay. and, and I'm sure it has depending on the zoning and, and for less than that. Um, so I don't know when, that, when the land that you're speaking of may have sold. It was in a couple of years. But the comps would have to support the appraisal of this property, and I do know that she was marketing it mm -hmm. at that $35,000 an acre rate. Okay. Have, have we as far as the city point, have we tried to negotiate this 25000 per acre? Mm -hmm. We certainly have. And she... That's her, that's her number because for her, and, and I mean, you know, she can sell for 35000 an acre and make a lot of money, or a lot more money, it's still a lot of money, or can she sell it, she can sell it to us for 25000 an acre and uh -huh. use the difference between the, fair, the market appraisal and what we're paying as the conservation easement through which tax credits can be realized. Okay. 
Is there any crop land on this? I mean, is there any crops being? Um, uh, I don't know if there currently is or not. That's more my question. Hey, maybe. I'm sorry, Steve. Okay. Mr. Payne? Uh, I'd like to ask Mr. Brown in his figure to keep this land. Did that include mowing the whole 126 acres? But not, not. It's only the main part you're going to mow more frequently. The the back part now that's not mowed. And I understand it's no longer zoned agricultural rice. Correct. Would that keep us from leasing this to a farmer to put soybeans or corn until we get a plan for this? Mr. McCord. Mr. Brown? I believe that most of the property now is used for cattle grazing. Mm -hmm. um, it's not zoned agriculture and it, it wasn't zoned agriculture either. So uh, it's a non-conforming use, but it's pre-existing, can continue to exist. I don't think that we've had any we, don't, we wouldn't want agriculture to go into a, a vacant parcel of land in a subdivision, though. So. Mr. McCord's addressing your question. So it'd be a continuation of another agricultural activity that's currently occurring on the property. Well, there's one currently going on. Yeah, as I understand, there's cattle that are grazing on the property. Not on that front part, but... But I guess if Is it's all one parcel, all of it? the no southerly them. and easterly portion, at least. I'm not sure about around the house, but not around the Does house. Does anybody know how many acres are available to put in crop land? No, don't know that. I suppose you could cut all the trees down, and you know. Yeah, I really don't want to cut all the trees down. That's part of the charm. And as far as the access, how many access? Just only one, or is there? Two. I think there's two driveways into the maybe even three on the including the far eastern portion of the property maybe three but they're they're not improved they're just one lane drives Steve I, I grew up out there my whole life there's there's never been any crops in front of the house no, on, I'm the, about the front of the house. on the side you house. started uh, flood service market no that, that's not go off that side. That, that's that's industrial that's not part of this it no, just it, comes up it just comes up to where the fence starts there it comes over about where that wall is it's just 50 something acres the, the rest of that's wall. industrial and that's not part of it Steve. but the cows 51. are grazing on how much i wonder if there's cows out there now then they gotta have fence around probably two-thirds of it the cows are on the other side where they're going to where, where they're going to build the houses that was across from the folks that's been coming up here, the, the cows are across from those folks. That long strip, you know, the long strip. Coast it's Ferry. on around Coast Ferry Road. No, I, I prefer not to. <laughs> hey, are we, with that conservatory, are we able to lease or even sell the house if we think that that's too much, if somebody wanted to buy it or lease it for, to use as a venue? Again, we could negotiate that within there. And, and there is some um, provision in a conservation easement where you can exclude the structure for whatever purpose. Mm -hmm. It's very much, as Ms. High McCauley said, kind of up to the authors. So it's just to protect the intent of the seller long term. Motion to approve the. Langley Hall. Okay, motion to approve Langley Hall by Councilman Overton, second by Councilwoman Love. Is there any further discussion? I'll have to abstain. Okay. I'm a partner on another venture with the property owner. All right. Okay, so all those in favor of approving the purchase of Langley Hall, please say aye. Aye. Uh, I think I have three. Opposed, please say no. 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 I have two no's. Councilman Alexander, how are you voting? I'm abstaining. Okay, so it I have two abstentions, three in favor, two opposed. It is approved. We will move now to which one would you like to move to? East Main is next. East Main is a small parcel of land. It's right there at the beginning of the historic district. It does have a beautiful rock wall. It is as, and I wasn't here tonight. He spoke. I'd love to have heard what he said, but Mr. Schultz, I think, spoke about it. Part of the Battle of Gallatin site. Again, it has historic significance. And for me, again, speaking of my dreams, um, as downtown 
the density continues to grow in the periphery of our square, um, I think it would be just lovely to have a, a small park that's accessible by people who go to the hospital, people who live in the area, people who visit or work in downtown. Because as, as you know, Gallatin grows up, there are going to be more people walking the streets and looking for a green refuge in our core commercial district. I to approve it myself. Okay, I have a motion to approve by Councilman Overton, a second by Councilwoman Love. Is there any? Councilman Snell. And now, how much was this piece of property? I'm sorry. 351. 351. When did Trinity 1000? Is that the one? I'm sorry, but I have totally gone blank on what that price was because originally he was asking. It came, the appraisal came in at 450. I think it was 351,000. I think it came in at 459, and he said he would take 440. I think I have that dollar figure. Is that piece, that piece of property landlocked? No, you have access directly from East Main. You got access to it? From East Main, yeah. From East Main, you got a driveway to it? Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Right, there, and, right there from where the rock walls happen. And your plan, Paige, is, is to have a green park sitting there, you maybe a pavilion. Pavilion, potentially a playground. Just where people at the end of town can mm -hmm. have something to walk to and, and go to. Mm -hmm. And we don't have nothing over there really right now, am I right? No, I mean, of course that's where the football stadium is. There is a small piece of triangle property right there behind there. And I would like to talk to the county to see if they would you know, let us include that in this park space because then we could extend it a bit more. So. What's the total acreage on there? 3.4 acres? 2.81, I think. I don't know where I, I got that from. Maybe I do have that price. Hmm. The appraisal is 359. The asking price is, well, the original asking price was 400. The appraisal came in at 359, and Mr. Hodges said he would take 340. Uh, I'll have to go through this. That's what Mr. Camp says. So I bet he's entirely right. The value is the value. And that's why we had an appraisal. And I have these documents with me if anyone wants to look at them. What are we looking for, the appraisal? No, I'm looking for the acreage, acreage per. I think that's about right. Okay. okay, call for the question. You want to vote on call for the question? I'll uh, let me, can I say one thing? Yeah. Like this piece of property right here, are we going to try to move on it pretty rapidly as far as some type of development on this particular piece of property to go ahead and start using it? Actually, with this particularly particular piece of property, because it was a battleground site, I definitely feel like it's one to pursue grants on. It's one for what? One to pursue grants on, because okay. there are some you know battlefield organizations that will support the preservation of those. This is in the, this is in the historic district, so. <coughs> It just makes sense to me to have a, something green kept there on a battleground site in one of the most, one of the older, most beautiful parts of Gallatin. Vote on call for the question. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed say no. Okay, we're going to vote on the property located at East Main. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, please say no. I have two no's, Mr. Camp and Mr. Hayes, is that correct? Any abstentions? That was East Main. So what was your vote, Mr. Alexander? Uh, yes. Okay, so I had um, five in favor, two opposed. Thank you, that one passes as well. And now we move to the Sugar Tree Lane property.
Questions? Motion, Motion to approve by Councilman Overton. I'll second it. I think we need that property to tie in with the uh, piece that we already own. We okay, have a motion and a second opening it for discussion. Um, we would have access when the property becomes accessible that is designated to the future parkland. When Jennings Lane, is it Jennings Lane? I always get confused on that. that no. Okay. Nor do we have it to the other 40 something acres, John. We've got 40 something acres we give to us, and we don't have access to that either. Well, we do, but not access that we need to be using. So. I, you know, this is not land, as you know, that we pursued. It was an opportunity that was brought to us. And I think one of the most interesting, well, besides the fact that it adjoins land that we already have, um, this is owned by what was a church that is now defunct. And therefore, funds have to be dispersed in a certain kind of way. And the owners um, have committed to spending, uh, not spending, but giving that money from the sale of this land to area nonprofits, so it's local nonprofits. It's adjacent to some we already own. Is that right? Yes. So how much we already own? Forty, mm -hmm. and this is how many? Fourteen. Fourteen. We own forty-six, and so this would make that total property sixty acres, and. David's working on, I'm sorry, Mr. Brown is working on getting a master development plan for that land so that we do have a plan in place so that when we do get access, we'll be able to have a park there. And this is not a park that we're envisioning being for um, ball fields or anything like that. It's more uh, an area that we envision being one with trails and picnic shelters and maybe some um, small uh, recreational activity. So you would be using the whole... 14 plus 46. the 40 and doing something pretty soon hopefully or within the next three or four years i don't know that it'll happen that quickly i'm not going to commit to that i don't think you yeah. if, if i'm saying it like um miss love this used to be one track of land and this was a piece of land that uh, dan downs gave to the city and then part of it was tracked off and sold for future development of the church and the church went different ways. Um, my only thing was is, is uh, to tie that land back together. I know Councilman Hayes really wants to do something in our neck of the woods, so, and I'm interested in that, and I thought maybe it would help out by having much more land right there to actually do something with. Questions, anyone? All right, we'll vote on the point. Before you vote, I just, we may have to separate these out in different ordinances because we have different vote counts. So I just want to make everyone aware of that, that basically you've amended this ordinance by separating it out. Make sure everyone is okay with that. Okay. We're going to have separate vote counts. Um, I'm going to look at it, but we may, we may have to do that. Can we do it both ways? What do you mean? Um, just vote on the ordinance as amended by previous votes, but then if it's not passable that way, have... Depending on how this vote goes. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so now we're going to vote on the station camp property, if you all are ready. Um, seeing no one objecting, all in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, please say no. no. Have a no from Councilman Hayes. A no, for, no from you? Okay. No from Councilman Camp. Councilman Alexander? I'm, I said I. Okay, so five in favor, two opposed, no abstentions. Is that correct? Okay, that is approved. So, Ms. Tom McCauley, that puts us where? Since approved, we can now proceed with one ordinance. Okay, we now have one ordinance each, and so it will be a stand because, as, as stands because all three of those properties are included, allowing for up to $2.2 .2 million as a purchase price. Um, any further discussion on the ordinance as a whole? You know, the <clears throat> I feel comfortable with uh, the station camp development. I feel comfortable with a lot um, in town. The Langley is the only thing that I really could that I really thought about a lot. But I feel comfortable now that we do have a way out. There's a lot of opportunities for us to lease the land to cattle, lease the house out, or do something. But 
way down the road if we see that we bit off more than we could choose or, or uh, more than we could chew or uh, uh, I feel that we can move on but I, and sell it or something. But I want to make sure with Miss Haynes that we do leave ourselves plenty of opportunity where if we want to back out that we can do something. I think Ms. Hyman Colley and I both have a good idea of what this council wants and we will certainly advise you of the conservation easement before we finalize it. I echo it. that too, Sean. I, I know it's, it's, it's a little scary, but, but there again too, I have, I have fooled with a lot of property in my life and, 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 and I don't know how you can go wrong mm -hmm. with property. Yeah, and, 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 and again, I'll commit that this council will be apprised of that easement terms before it is signed. Yes, sir. Uh, Expanded on what Sean is saying. So you're saying if we buy this piece of property and we put the conservative or, or easement on it, if we want to sell the property, the easement comes off? No, no, no. Oh, that's no. what I would say. So whatever we do up front, Right. Is what we're stuck with. Right. But if we want to decide we want to get rid of this property, we can, part of it we can't get rid of because it's going to have an easement on it. No, it, we'll always be able to sell it. Sell it, it's but it's just yeah, but you're not going to find a buyer. Well, let me ask so, you this: Are we going to? Yeah. Yeah. Or you know, it may be three acre tracks. It might. What you know, we don't know yet. What can we? Means. Can we as city council look at the final contract on this? That's what I've said. I will make sure that you see that before okay. it is all signed. Right. I was wanting to make yeah. sure the mic yeah. is on. And I want you there. to. I want y'all all to be comfortable with that. Certainly. This is not well, it's kind of related, but if, if anybody got a plan for which the property would be developed first, I would say as opportunities as it, I would say as um, opportunities become available either via funding or um, uses. I, don't, I can't promise that. Um, um, certainly LPRF grants come around every couple of years. We would be eligible for those, but that's going to be a priori prior a priority list um, that we'll work with uh, Mr. Brown on because we may have some other part project that we would prefer to apply via that. I think there are probably some corporate grants. I think certainly um, the battlefield grants that I spoke of would make sense for one. So I think where we would begin is searching for dollars to help in the development of those properties. And when we, when, when, when all comes together with a plan and available dollars, then we would move forward. And some may not be for a long time. I'm not, you know, we've had, Mr. Hayes, how long have we had the 46 acres on station camp? 12 years. We've had it 12 years. 12 years. But I mean, I appreciate this so much. I, I, I was thinking about what Mr. Javant said earlier and um, about including open space, green space. Is that an interchangeable term, Mr. McCord? You don't have to get up. Well, you talking about revision? No, no, no. I'm asking you if open space and green space are interchangeable terms. <clears throat> Well, it can be, I suppose. Uh, green space is just open space. I mean, on does a that plat. have to be like grass turf? Open space like on a plat means it's not reserved for development purposes. Mm -hmm. Green space could be somebody's backyard, mm -hmm. front yard, but it's not open to the mm -hmm. public or the homeowners mm -hmm. collectively. Okay. So I was just we, we identify that. open space tracks in as common area owned tracks in most subdivisions. Mm -hmm. And those are required in all of our residential developments at this point. However, to be able to preserve um, large areas of green space, the city cannot condemn land to keep it from being developed that's owned by a third party. They either have to own the land or some generous benefactor has to donate it to us. And we would welcome those as well. So. All right, we're ready to move on and vote on the ordinance. This is second reading on the ordinance 01903-19. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Yeah, yeah, that sounds weird to even vote on it, Ms. Hyde McCauley, if I'm doing it. I think, I think you've already voted. Okay, so it's considered, since we've already passed each individually, we're done. I apologize. Let's move on to a second reading on, on ordinance number 01904 
Dash 20, Vice Mayor Camp. Thank you, Mayor. This is orders appropriating $12,266.67 from revenue received from an insurance on a damaged vehicle. So moved. Second. Motion by Vice Mayor Camp, second by Councilwoman Love. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, this is second reading on Ordinance 01904-20. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, please say no. We still had five in favor since two have walked out, so it does pass. Um, item number three is first reading on Ordinance 01904-21. Councilman Hayes is This is an ordinance of the City of Gallatin, Tennessee, reaffirming the mixed-use district zoning on three lots totaling 131.35 acres. Group B parcel 013.00, 014.00, and 015.00 in approving a preliminary master development plan for 378, 382, and 386 Big Station Camp Boulevard located south of the intersection of Big Station Camp Boulevard and Long Hollow Pike. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion by Councilman Hayes, second by Councilman Fennell. Is there any discussion? This is first reading on Ordinance 01904-21. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, please say no. It does pass unanimously. Item number five is first reading on Ordinance 01904-23. Councilman Hayes. This is an ordinance of the City of Gallatin, Tennessee, rezoning 4.372 acre portion of a parcel from the PGC Plan General Commercial District to the MRO Multiple Residential and Office District and a 0.143 acre portion of a parcel from the residential eight planned residential development district to the MRO multiple residential and office district with a preliminary master development plan for Kensington Road located north of Freedom Church Road and west of Greenlee Boulevard. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Councilman Hayes, second by Councilman Fennell. Is there any discussion? This is first reading on Ordinance 01904-23. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, please say no. Motion passes, uh, um, ordinance passes unanimously on first reading. Item number, I believe we're going to seven, is Resolution R1904-22, Councilwoman Love. Thank you. This is a resolution appointing Larry Wise to the Gallatin Industrial Development Board. I so move. Second. Motion by Councilwoman Love, second by Councilman Hayes. Is there any discussion? This is resolution R1904-22. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, please say no. It does pass unanimously. Item number eight is resolution R1904-23. Councilman Fan is recognized. Resolution appointing Larry Wise to the Galton Health, Educational, and Housing Facilities Board. I so move. Motion by Councilman Fan, second by Councilwoman Love. Is there any discussion? Okay, this is resolution R1904-23. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, please say no. It does pass unanimously. That brings us now to other business. Does this council have any? You got the resolution on my desk. Yep. You got that to on there. Yep. Ms. Tom do you want to explain or do I need to ask Buck to explain or? I can, I'll explain it. So last week um, when Nick came up and discussed with you the uh, airport authority needing permission to build across a right of way and we discussed that need to come before this body at that time I thought that we were going to be able to vacate the right of way but we are not able to do that just yet. So you have an ordinance before you just authorizing and giving permission for the airport authority to build across right of way. I've not been able to run this through uh, the airport authority's attorney yet. I don't know if they're going to want an <coughs> easement uh, to do that. Typically, if you're building on someone's property the right of way, you're going to want an easement. So we may have to execute an easement as well. But <coughs> this is just an ordinance giving authority and authorizing them to build. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Councilman Hayes, second by Councilman Fennell. Is there any further discussion? Okay, all in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, say no. It does pass unanimously. Is there any other other business from this council to come forward this evening? Okay, seeing none, we move to public recognition on non-agenda related items. This is the time of the meeting. You may come forward and discuss items that aren't on the agenda but are of concern to you. 
Again, we ask that you introduce yourself and give us your address, please. Mary Wanchos coming. Can I ask uh, Nick or somebody one question? What's South Water and, and Steam Plant? How's that coming on the railroad track? Just quickly. Mr. Roger, uh, uh, back Lanson. Um, the the railroad crossing the panels are in we're just working to coordinate with CSX on when the work will actually take place <laughs> honestly no <laughs> it's kind of it's I mean it, in the summer uh, is probably the best case we we were they're getting rough we understand but we're working with CSX to try to get it taken care of <laughs> My name is Joe Borden. I live at 1007 Hart Street here in Gallatin, Tennessee. I rise today to uh, inform some folks about something, and that is that Mr. Lighthizer and his group at the uh, Battleground Group would love to hear from us on with regard to our historical piece of property, Mayor. And uh, there is a organizing group that they have bought properties and so forth with battlegrounds throughout the nation. All of them, Shiloh, all of them. So that would be our place to go with regard to that issue. I would ask that you send me his name, if you would, please. Ma'am? I would ask that you send me his name, if you would, please. I'll, I'll come by your office if I can get to talk to you. We'll, we'll take care of that problem for you quick. Uh, I have come tonight to make a presentation. If uh, the fellow we call Let's Make a Deal, Mr. Fenton would step forward, please. Seeking you shall find, my friend. <laughs> I saw the deal you're slipping around today and dropping off those uh, big rolls of stuff. What you have to do, Mayor, is you have to make sure you have grease on the wheel so it, it doesn't squeak. That's what we have to do on this deal. So we want to thank you and the staff for doing an excellent job, and that's why we torment Mr. Uh, Fenton with this stuff today because uh, we got to make it sweet for our folks coming in to do business with us. You all have a great evening. Thank you, Mr. DeBoard. Anyone else wishing to speak this evening under public recognition on non-agenda related items? I see Mr. Javons. Hmm. Uh, you were talking about pavilion. I remember that. About what? About pavilion put oh, I in the land. Barbecue. I remember he has one. He's ready to give to the city, so that will oh, save some money. Right. Yeah, he told you he would give it to you to save his uh, his uh, stormwater fees. That's right. So will you one. move it for us? Yeah, I, I remember things. I'm getting old, but I still remember some things. Uh, yeah, I got a couple of things to now kind of kind of bother me. Um, I have to come back to Winsome because I was the man the main attraction tonight when. The developer says okay, that was an agenda item. So if you want to address wind song, you have to come back when wind song is on the agenda next time. This is for non-agenda items. Non-agenda. Okay, Liberty Creek. Huh? Liber Liberty Creek. Okay. okay. It's kind of related to water water issue. Um, I don't know if you guys need to uh, go check that, but they uh, they redigged again for the third or fourth time, the retention pond. So now this stuff is a monstrosity uh, because what they're doing didn't work. So I don't know if it's something you guys check. Uh, Mr. Rogers will pass that on to our stormwater engineers. Yeah, yeah, because it's a, uh, as soon as it train, there is more water on the road than in a retention pond, which kind of, you know, look look pretty normal because the piece of land is going down probably at five to eight degrees, I suppose. And um, I miss the last one where you guys were talking about the airport. So uh, if you need help on that, I can I can help you on that. 
you really ought to engage with the airport authority out there, especially if you're yeah, uh, serving. I need I need to watch the tab because I don't really know what. I don't think there's anything that we discuss that would be. Yeah, what got said on that, you. but. Uh, but you you really need to meet the airport authority folks. Yeah. Yeah, you should go to the meetings. Because um, you guys talk about the private jet entity, and that was my word for uh, almost 20 years. So. Yeah. I think we're not ready for that. And if somebody think uh, <coughs> the wealthy who use private jets, uh, I used to fly on my career, gonna land in Galatan the way it is, that's not gonna happen. Yeah. I'm sorry to. Mr. Fenton could actually show you some, share with you some information about the users of our airport. You might be surprised. Mm. I, have, I have numbers too. Mm -hmm. And we m maybe the numbers we have are not. Are not well, that's why it'd be interesting for you guys to sit yeah. down and discuss. I have no clue. Yeah. So. But uh, I think there is a lot of work to uh, be done there if you yeah. want people to come to that place. Well, the Sumner Regional Airport is that. It is not in our control at all. We have tried to work with them to help accommodate their desires to expand and grow, and that's been the city of Gallatin's role. Yeah. Uh, but we, pr I, I mean, I, I, I think they would really appreciate your experience, interest, and expertise. You have my number. Yeah. We'll make introductions. <laughs> Mr. Fenton, remind me, and I'll send it to you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wishing to speak this evening under public recognition on non-agenda-related items? Seeing no one, that makes us ready for another motion. Motion to adjourn by Councilman Overton, second by Councilman Fan. All in favor say aye. All in favor say aye. Opposed, we are adjourned. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for hanging out with us through this very long meeting, and we look forward to seeing you again. Have a great evening.